so thank you for that nice introduction and the opportunity to come and speak with you today. Um, the title of my slide is Next Generation Grow, Finish Swine Health and Growth Monitoring. And what I'm going to tell you is the stuff I'm going to talk about today apply is, is really, this is the application to swine. However, we can use the same sort of tools when we look at other species as well. So I like to start out with looking at the challenges that our animal producers are facing today. We have some some things that have been we've been concerned about for a long time, providing the, th the correct thermal environment for the animals has been a long a long time um, object of our objective of our of a lot of our research and why we put animals in housing and we still work with that today. Waste management and odor management has also been a long standing um, concern as we have grown in the United States, we have we have increased those number of um, concerns we've had. We, as the public becomes farther and farther um, disengaged with animal production, they are very concerned about animal well-being. Um, when we have the antibiotic use and have being able to target that, that is a concern for our for our public, but also um, for our animal caretakers as well. When do they apply it? How do they? How much do they apply it? What animals do they apply it to? And it all goes to the sustainability of our animal production. Sustainability in all three um, facets. We have we have economic sustainability, of course, because if our producers aren't making any money, they wouldn't be in livestock production. So that's our first one that we think of. Environmental sustainability is the second one that we really think of. We have to make sure that we are we are maintaining the environment and we aren't polluting our environment with animal waste and and such things and odors. But the third one we don't necessarily think of, and that is sustainability in the social sense. We have to ensure that that the general public understands what we do and um, is okay with how we are conducting our business. So that becomes a really big deal. The last thing has really become an issue, I would say in the last six, five, six years, and that is where is our next generation of animal caretakers coming from? So that's kind of where we target um, the area of precision animal management. So I always like to start, start a presentation and think, I want you guys to think through these questions. What will our grow finish facilities or our animal facilities look like in 10 years, in 20 years, or in 50 years? When we start developing these systems, should we employ technology? Why should we employ technology? What do we hope to gain by putting technology in the animal environment? What technology should we use? And what are the implications of that technology? So to give you a perspective of what an animal caretaker, and like I said, this is focused on pigs, but what the animal caretaker does every, every day. They walk through these pens. They have, they have a lot of animals to look at. They, this is about 15 out of 40 of those pigs in this pen. And what they're doing is they're looking to see, to see which animals are sick, which animals need to be treated and which animals are ready for market. And it is a difficult task. And remember, this is a very small pen that only has about four, 40 pigs and you're looking at about 15 of those 40. Remember, producers are looking at about 1,200 animals in a single building. And a lot, a lot of times those are in pens of 200 or, or could be more than that. So it's really important that we have we have help for those producers. So that was a research barn. This is a production barn. So these are about 150 head pens, and these pigs are ready for market. So try to put your head in, in an animal caretaker's mind, and they're walking through this barn. There are 1,200 head in this barn, and they have about four barns on this site. So that is their that is their job is to decide which of these animals need treated. 
And remember that we're getting a lot of turnover in our animal caretaker staff. So it's not like these, these um, people have 30 years of experience or, or even 10 years of experience. They might not have grown up on an animal farm. And so being able to select an animal that is sick out of, out of 1,200 head is not something they can learn overnight. So the goals of, of our studies and, the, and of my presentation today is to, we want to look at developing systems to help determine animals that need attention and also to help, help um, producers or animal caretakers pick out which animals are ready for marketing. These are two most important factors for the bottom line of producers. And they are two things that we are relying 100% on the skill level of our animal caretakers to do. So in order to, to develop these systems, we have three objectives. First of all, if you're gonna know which animal needs attention and which animals are ready for marketing, that, that means that you have to know which animals are which, um, especially if you're gonna do this with electronic systems. The next thing is we're gonna look at systems a system to do illness detection or at least anomaly detection. And the last one we're gonna talk about is weight estimation. So animal identification. Animal identification, we can do a lot of different ways, um, but in pigs, it's, it's tricky because they don't want tags in their ears. So in cattle, we do, um, we do visual tags and we also do RFID tags. And for our systems, we have we have also went to looking at RFID. RFID is radio frequency identification. And there's a lot of different RFID tags available. Um, there's two classes. There's passive tags and active tags. Passive tags um, are the ones that you see in, in mostly in cattle. Um, they are lightweight. They don't have a battery. They have unlimited life in quotes, and they're relatively inexpensive. They're about two to three dollars a tag. Um, active tags are have tremendous opportunities. Um, they do require a battery. They are heavier. With a with a battery, they have a limited life. They are they're quite a bit more expensive. I'm not sure we're ready for prime time on those, but they do allow for for precise tracking, sort of like an indoor GPS. And we can have really long range with those. When we look at passive tags, there are several different frequencies. For animal, we really look at low frequency tags, although they are looking at high frequency and ultra high frequency for some applications. But we really are sticking with that low frequency tag, the ones that are most common in livestock today. When we look at illness detection, there's like I said, there's a lot, there's several different ways to do it. But the more you can be hands off um, the animals and just observe them electronically, the better off I think we will be. So our system looks at utilizing um, a radio frequency identification. What we have done is we have put antennas in a panel on the front. We read those antennas every second. So we can then look at how much time each individual animal, because remember they have a tag on them that identifies them, spends at the feeder. We're also doing that with water, although I will not present that today. It's really, so this is what the panel looks like if you would peel it apart and look at it. Um, there's five different antennas and that goes to the technology that we're using. Um, and it has to be that when we set up those systems that we know how far um, read range we get on each of those. We have set up this system so it reads almost to the edge of this, the feed trap. So we know the animal's head is in the feeder um, and presumably eating. Although sometimes we get, we get some anomalies where the pig is sleeping, but most of the time they are eating. There. When you look at, and I must have went too fast, this is 40 pigs, um, time spent every day from the time they entered the, 
the facility at eight weeks and when they left about not quite four months later and how much time each of them spent at the theater every single day. Well, this is really messy and it doesn't look like it would really be important or something that we should track. When we start peeling that stuff back and we start looking at individual animals, we really see some interesting patterns emerging. So I have two individual animals that we're gonna look at and we're gonna talk about. So this is time that they spent at the theater and the days in the facility. And remember, this is over 24 hours. The dotted line is where the, how much time the pig actually spent in the theater. And the red line is what our model is suggesting. It is a very simple model. It is simply a, a linear regression. We call that an autoregressive model. And it sort of, increases in length until about 30 days, and then it's a, a rolling 30-day window. And so you can see our prediction. When that prediction is, we call it two and a half standard deviations away from what is actually happening, we throw a, a flag. And this is, you can see we have three flags, and then the animal is actually treated for pneumonia. Um, that animal caretaker in that facility had 30 years of experience and she was in a research facility. So she wasn't looking at 1200 head. She was looking at probably, let's say 300 head over the course of the day. And she was collecting a lot of data and was very, very precise on that. So it isn't that the animal caretaker is aren't doing a good job, but it is that the animals hide their their responses until they get pretty sick. And so the computers are able to pick that up before the animal caretaker, even with a lot of experience. The next one, we're gonna see a pig come into the barn at eight weeks of age. And for the first 35 days, they spent less than 10 minutes a day at the feeder. We're working on a model to, to um, find those animals. This was before we had that model in, in place. But you can see that animal was treated for pneumonia at day 18, but you can see that didn't quite um, solve their problem. Unlike the last one where you saw a quick recovery, this animal might not have needed to be treated with antibiotics. Maybe it was uh, something else that was keeping that animal from eating a lot. So we're still learning a lot. Um, with understanding feeding behavior and how to apply antibiotics. But this really gives us an insight into how the animals are behaving. And when we see anomalies, we can start checking them out. So the next component that I wanna talk about is weight estimation. And we can run a pig over a scale or a cow over a scale, but I'm telling you that there are very few scales in, in hog barns. If you have 1200 head that you have to weigh, at um, 30 seconds a piece, we're talking about 10 hours to weigh all those animals to put to pick out which one should go to market that week. So it doesn't happen. It's too labor intensive for that. So if we can do it another way. So what we have done is we have looked at a depth image and the depth image is a little bit different than an RGB or a digital image like you take with your phone. When you take a picture with your phone, it is an array of numbers that represents how much blue, how much green, and how much red. That's the RGB. Um, and then those are put together, and then it shows you an image that your eyes can understand. This, I don't know if any of you um, know, is an Xbox camera. It was to get kids off the couch and active. And this was one of the first cheap um, depth image cameras that were available. And what a depth image is, is it gives you the distance from the camera to every pixel in the image. And this is a just a made up an array, but that's that would be like centimeters from the camera. And you can see here that if you plot that out in three dimensions, what it looks like. And so the floor would be, of course, the farthest away or the largest numbers and the pig would be the shortest number. So we invert that, and so we can see an animal standing there. 
So here is a Connect version two. This was the second camera that was released. And you can see this is a sow walking through a corridor. And you can see how nice that, that actually looks. So what we do to estimate weight is we clear out all of the excess stuff that isn't the pig. We take off the head and the tail and we do that um, because those are big variables if they have their head way up or tucked underneath them like this sow does. Then we sum up all of those columns of height, do a little math and get our volume. And so this is what what it looks like and it it shows weight in kilograms but it could be weight in pounds compared to our volume and there are some inconsistencies there and but our r squared or the the percent of of variation that we are explaining is about 99 percent of the variation we're explaining with just a simple linear regression so when we look at this we can think that there might be some some animals that are fatter or or leaner and that might impact our our basically is the animal more dense or less dense and that could impact this we could and i could show you um some some differences in the cameras because some of the cameras aren't as nice as other ones and that could show some problems on our volume measurement um but when we do precision animal management we call this, our golden standard, our volume measurement is our golden, or our weight is our golden standard, and we're trying to estimate our golden standard. So when we put a pig on the scale, and this is a, about a 15 second video, I want you to think about this. This pig is, is pretty normal behaving pig. We have ones that are worse, and we have ones that might stand a little bit more still, but this is sort of your average pig. And when you think about that, and you think you wouldn't keep a pig on a scale for 15 seconds, but any of the weights that you saw pop up there could be a weight that we capture as a pig walks across the scale for our research. And that varied by, let's see if I can get this. By seven pounds, plus or minus seven pounds, which was about what our error is when we look at our regression analysis. So a lot of our error in our estimation of weight comes from our golden standard or the weight on the scale, which isn't very perfect. Um, but we can, we can live with that error. So what we have done is we've now start to apply this out into the pen. This is our research pen. And once again, we have about 40 pigs in this pen. When a pig comes to drink, we capture their, their RFID number. We activate this camera. We capture the image, and then we can estimate the weight while they're drinking. And so that is what our camera is. This is our digital image that we are capturing. And this is our depth image, and that's a colorized depth image. But you can get an understanding of the blue is closer to you and the red is farther away. So you can see the, the volume there. This is a short video that looks at, at how this would work. And we would not record this video, we would just capture the weights. But you can see as the animal comes, it is it can continually collect um, weights. And you can see that weight is, is varying a little bit depending on how how the animal is standing, but it's pretty close to about 129 kilograms, which is which is around market weight. It's about 100 or 250 um, pounds. And so we can, since we have four four nipple drinkers, we can capture weight of four pigs at the same time. So. In conclusion, I ask you to think about this. Um, should we employ technology? And I've shown you some advantages of being able to, to um, employ that technology. Why should we employ the technology? I really think we should employ the technology to really help our animal caretakers. Um, and to really get to the basis of some of our animal caretaker um, challenges that they're facing today. 
mostly from animal well-being to next generation caretakers. Although we can do stuff with, with thermal images, we um, technology can help it odor and waste, but it's not exactly the technology that I showed here today. So what technology? I showed you RFID tags and cameras. When we go forward, we might be able to eliminate the RFID and use, use digital images to maybe detect which animal it is. Maybe we'll do some different technology, but right now that's kind of where we are. And we really see some big potentials of using digital and depth images. So what are the implications of that? And I want to continue to reinforce that technology will always be a tool. We never want to eliminate the animal caretaker in the, in the equation. Maintenance is essential. We have to ensure that if we put tools in there that they are maintained. But when we develop these technologies, we also have to be very mindful of how much maintenance they're going to need. If they spend more time maintaining the equipment that's supposed to help them than maintaining the animals, then we've sort of we sort of lost ground there. And we must work together, not just ag engineers, not just um, computer scientists, not just animal um, animal scientists, not just producers, but we all need to and veterinarians. We all need to come together and work together to develop these next generation tools because we cannot do it in a vacuum. And once again, we cannot eliminate the animal caretaker in this process. One other thing that I really like to show, so this is um, the, the panels on the front have our RFID system. The computer is in the, in the box on the top that he hits with the high power or high pressure water. What we can't do is we cannot put instruments in a barn and expect them to compromise biosecurity. We have to make sure that we are we are ready to be in the barn with equipment and that the equipment is, is going to help the producer and not take too much time. So this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, we, aren't, we are only limited by our imagination and our will to act. And I, I truly believe that is, is where we are in, in precision animal management today. And with that, I thank you for your time.